guys? How are you doing today? I am doing fabulous, and today we're going to talk about the southern copperhead, one of the first species of venomous snakes I ever worked with. But before we get into that, if you could do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, because this is going to be a, the first of a multi-part series. Uh, this series is going to talk about all the amazing things that venom is used for in the world. I get asked on a daily basis why I work with the animals that I work with. Um, number one, my mom, consistently. Joe, why do you work with all these deadly snakes? And I tell everyone the same thing, because venom is amazing. It does so much for the world, people have no idea. Then the next question they ask, oh, do you collect venom to make anti-venom? Everyone thinks the only thing that venom is used for is to make anti-venom, which is just completely not true. Venom is used for so much more. Which brings us to today, the Southern Copperhead, the first of many videos. And what is the Southern Copperhead doing? Well, the Southern Copperhead could soon be either a treatment and or a cure for breast cancer. You heard me right, a treatment and or a cure for breast cancer. But first, I want to go ahead, take this guy out, give you guys a closer look at him, and teach you a little bit about this snake before we get into the medical side. Let's see, this is a little small, and this is a venomous snake, so we're going to need some space. How'd all those other YouTubers do it? Oh yeah. Whoa! Well that was cool. Hmm. Now, if I could just get rid of this chair. Whoa! Guess I didn't think that one through all the way. Well anyway, let's go ahead and get back to the snake. Alright, first things first, safety tools. We're going to go ahead and use my tongs to remove this lid because this is a pit viper, which means on each side of its face, between its eye and its nostril, there's a small heat pit, which is actually, if I can carefully without starting him, I'll show you, try and point it out, is right there. Now they use those heat sensing pits to detect the most minute temperature changes in the environment around them, which gives them pinpoint accuracy when striking their prey. So I'm going to very carefully pull him out here. Now the first thing you're going to notice is the beautiful camouflage pattern that goes okay. down this guy's back, almost resembling fallen leaves on the ground. Now this is one of the most common venomous snakes in the United States. They've learned to adapt to all sorts of situations. They can live in the forests, they can live in rural areas, they can live in the mountains, which makes them very prominent. And they'll also, because of their small size, generally not reaching over two or three feet, although there has been a few bigger than that, but because of their general small size, They'll basically hide under anything that gives them cover, whether it be for security or to wait for food. And with them heat sensing pits, and them being so small, they tend to strike at anything that makes them feel threatened. Now these snakes are known to occasionally hunt for food, but mostly they're an ambush predator. They'll lay still in leaf litter, or under a log, or a crevice, or a crack, or anything they can hide under, and they'll use those heat sensitive pits to detect those minute temperature changes to strike their prey. For a mouse, for something small, sometimes even certain insects, these are known to eat, oftentimes holding on to it until it's subdued, and then swallowing it whole. And because of that, and because of all the places they can adapt to live and all the things that they're willing to hide under, they are also responsible for the most snake bites in the United States over any other snake. Luckily for most people, they have a very low toxicity level. They have a hemotoxic venom that is used to break down flesh to help them digest their food. Now, you do need to seek medical attention, but very rarely, and I mean very, very rarely, is it ever fatal. So you should still definitely seek medical attention if you were to receive a bite from one of these snakes. But what does all that have to do with breast cancer? Well, that's where it gets really exciting. Let's go ahead and put him away so I can tell you all about it. Go ahead and grab him in there. We'll use the tongs. 
hose to put the lid back on again. There we go. And, man, that never gets old. Anywho, scientists have discovered a protein inside copperhead venom called contortrostatin. They then separated that protein and made it into an injection. Then, they took mice and injected them with human breast cancer cells. Two weeks later, they took the corchostatin injection and injected it directly into the memory gland of these mice. What they found was absolutely astonishing. Not only did it stop the growth of the tumor, it also slowed the growth of the blood vessels that supply the tumor with its nutrients. And to top it all off, it also greatly reduced the spread of the tumor to the lungs, which is an area that breast cancer is the most easily spread to. Now, this is still in its infancy of testing and trials, but it has been done by multiple different schools with very similar results. Most recently in 2018 by Professor Steve McKessie from the University of North Colorado, where he did this on a much larger scale, getting very, very similar results. I don't know about you, but that absolutely blows my mind. The venom from one of the most common venomous snakes in the United States could one day lead to the treatment or cure of breast cancer. Science is just astonishing. Go ahead and leave a comment below and tell me what you think about these trials and what it could possibly mean for our future. Also, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and the notification bell because there's going to be a lot more information about what venom is doing in the world coming very soon. Anyway. I gotta wrap this up. It's my anniversary. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm on the road. So until next time, have a super fantastic day, and I'll see you guys later. Or you'll see me later. Something like that. <laughs>